I really wanted to have a conversation about the um, catalytic converter uh, recycling industry. Uh, I would kind of like to look at it, break it down uh, using a, um, a visual example of a pyramid, right? At the top of the pyramid, the middle of the pyramid, and the bottom of the pyramid. If I start at the bottom of the pyramid, we've got a whole bunch of companies that are operating in this space that are either in the auto salvage, recycling of cars, and uh, of course, generating catalytic converter scrap for, for uh, recycling of precious metal. That's one part of the bottom of the pyramid. Uh, we have you know, scrap metal recycling uh, companies that are obtaining uh, catalytic converters for recycling through a lot of different sources. Most of them, I would say, probably come from auto repair operations or muffler shops, places like that, right? And uh, so they're, they're, they're bringing in material, or maybe they operate a, an auto salvage business along with their scrap metal recycling operation. And um, so it's kind of two businesses in one, right? But also in that space, you have um, other uh, players that are uh, running around and um, collecting this scrap stream um, from these sources. So they're part of the mix. You know, I guess core buyers would be uh, a good example. Uh, people that are buying rebuildable cores, uh, such as, uh, you know, uh, alternators, starters, things like that, right? But right. they'll also buy the other items. And so that would be that section of the pyramid. When you go to the middle of the pyramid, then you've got companies that are offering services um, for the re actual recycling uh, of, of the substrate that's inside of the catalytic converter. And, and uh, you know, they may be engaged in various forms of activity like, you know, decanning, cutting the converters open, uh, uh, milling, sampling, and assaying. Now, they may not be a a smelter, but they may be a smelter. They may, a smelter may be in that intermediary group as well. Right. Processor. A processor that ships to a smelter that's in that middle category as well that actually melts that material into um, a concentrate base metal ingot. Okay. So when you, get, when you get it up to the smelter level, the smelter typically sends the ingots that's recovered from the smelting operation to the refiner who's at the top right. of the pyramid. Okay. And they refine, th those refiners are actually engaged in the wet chemistry separation of the elements into their individual elemental forms. Right. That's so, the final process. Yeah, you can take an alloy step. of uh, six or eight elements and separate them into platinum, palladium, rhodium, copper, nickel, mm -hmm. iron, whatever it is. And, uh, but that's wet chemistry and it's a, it's a high capital intensity operation. And um, the technology involved with the wet chemistry side is, is uh, well advanced. And there's only, a, I would say, a handful of companies in the world. Globally here. Globally, that will be able to process it into the elemental form and return it back to the manufacturing sector to manufacture new product for maybe aircraft, aerospace, medical, dental, auto catalyst, whatever industry. the need is in the industry, they would sell those separated uh, elements too. So I went through all of this to try to get to the top of the pyramid for a discussion, okay? Okay. Because, you know, what we have is um, what's called the London Platinum and Palladium Market. This is, this is a, an industry group um, that is... Um, that has members of all of those refiners in the platinum refining industry. And so this group itself, the LPPM, self-regulates. And they have to regulate because they, they also handle gold. And a lot of this gold that's generated in the world um, comes from illegitimately sourced regions or conflict areas, right? Yes, yeah, certain parts of the world. Certain parts of the world, say in Africa, or even down in South America where there could be narco-terrorism that's occurring and they're using you know, the artisanal gold that's mined to launder uh, their illicit gains and wash it by exporting it out of the country to refiners and turning it into a legitimate income stream. Uh, so this began many, many years ago uh, in an effort to keep that illegitimate stream out. And the reason for it is, is, is simple. They use significant amount of capital that's sourced through the lending institutions. And the lending, you know, they, they have requirements, yeah. right? That, you, that they can, don't participate in these areas or they won't be lent to. And now, so here we downshift and we talk about the catalytic converter recycling industry, right? They have, they have um, a little bit of an issue with the fact that in the most recent past, we have, we have learned that stolen uh, catalytic converter substrate finds its way into the supply chain illicitly right. and makes its way up through the pyramid. And it's going to end up at the top six or eight refiners in the world. That's it. There's no other place for it to go. And so now the LPPM has come out with um, a guidance for self-regulating. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it says here, you know, it, it, it's in order to combat, you know, the systematic abuses of human rights to avoid, you know, the, contributing to the conflict, you know, to comply with existing anti-money laundering uh, legislation and combating terrorist financing. So like practices. the Patriot Act, right? Yeah, exactly. 
So LPPM, they, they began in, in 2019. It's, uh, they have what's called the RSRC, the Responsible Sourcing Review Committee, RSRC. And, and, and they, they provide you know, guidance to the refiners, to themselves, right? right? right. And, and, uh, and so you know, they don't consider platinum and palladium as a conflict mineral, such as gold could be a conflict mineral, mm -hmm. as we just previously discussed, because it's not sourced from conflict affected high risk areas. That's right. That's right. They also, they consider platinum group metals as critical and strategically important. And we all know why, because it's a very limited supply, only comes from a few areas of the world, primary mining, mm -hmm. and it's used for pollution abatement and a lot of high tech stuff. I mean, you go into it, there's a lot of it there. So, you know, they've, they've uh, you know, set up a framework uh, of, of a program uh, for compliance and, um, and auditing. And some of the highlights of that would be, um, you know, that um, these refiners are uh, providing written confirmation from their suppliers that their suppliers will follow the refiners' guidelines mm -hmm. to remain compliant. Um, the, you know, the LPPM has a website publication on the, on the RS policy and the whistleblowing policy. It's, it's up there to be, to be followed. And um, they require the elimination of cash payments of, by their LPPM refiners. So they require the refiners to not issue cash payment. Okay? And um, they're, they're trying to gain a better understanding of the global metal flows and those potential problems that could pop up. And uh, they are pushing the program down the supply chain. From the LPPM? From the top of the pyramid. From the top of the pyramid, from the LPPM mm -hmm. to the members of the LPPM. Right. Right? And then they're saying they're pushing the program down the supply chain to the IPMI members. Okay, so a smelter wouldn't necessarily be an LPPM member, but could be. Right. Right? But if they're not, they're more than likely to be an International Precious Metals Institute IPMI member. Right. That deals with an LPPM member. Right, because where does the material right. that the smelter processes, where's it going? To, it goes to the refiner up, upstream. Right. So uh, the LPPM is pushing the program down the supply chain to the IPMI member. All right? So this is interesting. Yeah. When you, when you understand, uh, this is a, a, a recent effort. It's new. It's, 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 it's going to require that uh, there's going to uh, take place audits that will either confirm the risks or list issues that they consider to be low, medium, mm -hmm. or high for corrective action. Right? Makes sense. And if it's high, you know, immediate action or suspension could occur. Right. Right. If it's low or medium, then there's a there's a process to bring that company into compliance. All right. Mm -hmm. and, and and back into the fold, so right. to speak. Right. Now, when you look at the updated uh, guidance and the, the versions, you know, they came out. Uh, the program launched in 2019 with version one. Well, in 24, they implemented version five. Mm. This year, version five. Currently. Currently, we're mm -hmm. in version five. Wow. Which is which is interesting. When you look at version four, it was launched in November 22, and so it's 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 had a, a full year of effect and now we're going into that auditing period okay so what you're saying is probably 2025 for version four for version for four version four right that came out this year in 2024 we're going to start seeing the effects of that next year i think so um you know and and, and the, the they're wary of uh what's been mentioned in the media recently uh concerning material sourced through the auto catalyst recycling sector that these substrate Platinum group bearing metals have found their way into the supply chain uh, illicitly and made their way up through the smelter into the refiner network that the LPPM has guidelines to keep it out, right. you know, to eliminate it. So, so here we are, you know, we're looking at the fact that, you know, they got uh, version five that's out and um, they're more interested in mineral origination, right? Mm -hmm. Know your customer. RSO, responsible sourcing. Responsible sourcing. But here's the key fact that as I, as I read through this and, and I understand it, right? Here's the key fact. If they require the LPPM members not to pay cash and they expect them to push it down to the IPMI members that supply them, mm -hmm. then the IPMI member companies would also be required to not pay cash in order to stay in compliance with these programs through audits. Right. Okay. Well, we know that's not completely happening yet. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Okay. So then... What's going to occur when an IPMI member comes into compliance with these no cash compliance issues? Right. Uh, they stop paying cash and they push that down to their supplier. Now, who would their supplier be? Their supplier would be another IPMI member who's in the who's in the precious metal recycling space, mm -hmm. or outside of the IPMI membership. Could be both. Could be both. Right. So a non-member. Okay, let's talk about a non-member for a moment. They're paying cash. They're dealing with a member who's required to certify responsible sourcing, mm -hmm. know your customer, AML, anti-money laundering procedures in place, and you're dealing with an entity that supplies you, material. they pay cash. 
it's not a problem today, but it's going to be a problem in 25. It's just the way I see it right. when these audits occur. So what if I'm a company operating in space further down the supply chain, down that pyramid? Mm -hmm. Let's say I'm at the bottom of the pyramid now. Right. And, and As a collector. These, companies are, these collectors are operating, and some of them, a percentage of them, are paying cash for their source materials. And it's um, not going to pass audits right. of their upstream who they supply to. Right. Who, it's affect who will that supply their upstream to the top of the pyramid who they supply to. So it has to be pushed down all the way to the bottom of the pyramid. Right. I know that people are going to say that cash is legal tender. You're allowed to pay cash in this, in this country uh, for goods and services at free will. And I have no argument against that. All I'm saying is that these sm small handful of refiners that are financed by the international banks, if they fall out of compliance, they'll go out, they'll go out of business. Right. They won't get the funding. So their hand is forced on this issue. So they're going to push it downstream to the smelter collector network. Right. Right. So the top of the pyramid is pushing it down to the middle of the pyramid. And now you're talking about from the middle to the bottom. What we're talking about right now, IPMI. Right. We're being required. Right. And if, and if a, uh, a downstream supplier of an LPPM refiner isn't mandating no cash, they soon will be. Right. Is all I'm saying. They may not be today, but they soon will be in about a year or so. Right. And then this is going to, this is going to close the door. And why are they doing this? Well, because there's really no way to stay in compliance otherwise. If those are the, if those are the requirements, mm -hmm. the re requirement has to be struck and removed. Uh, you see that happening? <laughs> Not, I don't think so. Yeah. You know, strategically, if you look out long-term, say you look out two, three years, five years, if, if, if you're a company at the bottom of the pyramid and you're operating in a cash space, generating catalytic converter scrap, and it's going into the upstream supplies, uh, to an IPMI member, then eventually getting to an LPPN member, because it's all gonna go to an LPPN member, It has right? to, yeah. And you're still paying cash, if you fall out of compliance at some point, when these audits occur or when these, these uh, know your customer AML requirements tighten up, mm -hmm. who are you going to sell to? Who's going to be left right. to sell to? Right. You're going to trade amongst yourselves and they'll never get to a processor? I don't think so. Yeah, no. It has to go upstream for recycling. Right. So I see the industry is evolving and it's going to change, which I think is really good. But you know, as a business owner, I like to be aware of what's changing, what's coming, and when it's coming. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to argue against my upstream, who I ship to, who I sell to, and they say, well, you're out of compliance. You can't send me any material. Pretty hard for me to argue with that. Yeah. I need to stay in compliance. Right. And, I'm, and, and what I'd like to caution people out there is you should look at this and see what changes need to be made to meet these coming requirements from the LPPM, if you've never heard of it before, because you don't operate in the precious metal space. You might operate in the recycling sector, mm -hmm. which is a large industry and has a lot of oversight. Right. Right. Well, this is another piece of oversight from the precious metal sector coming down from LPPM to IPMI mm -hmm. to its supplier network. Yeah. I would so say the top, obviously. It's coming from the top. It's at the middle right now, mm -hmm. and it hasn't reached the collector network yet. Mm -hmm. But it's coming. And, and I'm saying it's coming. Uh, be prepared. Make, make changes to your operating plans. And, uh, you know, let's, uh, that's, it, this is all, you know, part of um, responsible sourcing. Yeah. And how do we keep illegitimate flows of material out of the supply stream? That's right. That's what this is all about. Uh, yeah. Whether you agree with it or not, it's here. It's coming. It's coming to us. And uh, make everybody, plans. everybody, everybody, in this, everybody in this in this space, right. everybody in this space. I've been saying it for about five years. We need to eliminate cash, but it started at the top. Now they're coming down, right. and right. we're getting we're getting that pressure now at the bottom level, right? Mm -hmm. You're seeing legislation. We were talking about it in another video. Yeah, that you know the, the Senate uh, bill, the, the Senate House bill, bill. House bill that's currently proposed, operating in the catalytic converter space, no cash. Right. Well, even if you lobby to have the no cash requirement removed from the Senate and the House bill, and it becomes law, who are you going to sell to if the LPM PPM? is able to push down those requirements to the IPMI, and then those member companies are going to be required to pass their audits. Right. Or they and, can't do business. And they're going to have to have written certification from their supply stream that they're not paying cash right. or supplying illegally sourced materials. Mm -hmm. So it, the squeeze is coming from the bottom at legislation and the top at the refiner level. And, 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 and it's a concerted effort. It's going to ring it out. Whether we get it out of the legislation or not, at some point, I see it as who you going to sell to. Right. Because your operation is paying cash for this material and you fall out of LPPM guidelines, push mm -hmm. down the supply stream. So you're saying be uh, proactive than reactive. Get yourselves uh, <laughs> I'm saying, educated on these facts and, and be prepared, really. I'm saying that when, when I was in grade school and you'd come in and you'd take your, your jacket off and the, you had your cloak hook on the wall, right? And you'd want to go put your, your, your cloak on the hook. If all the hooks are taken, it went to the floor. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Right. So right now... <laughs> make the plans yeah. right because the changes are coming right and I don't want to be left on the floor 
I want to hang my coat up. That's right. I still have an operating business in this space. Definitely. <laughs> Might be a poor analogy, but you know, it's the best I could come up with right now. Right? That's good on the fly. <laughs> well, that was very good information. I, I appreciate you. I, I just, I just, I really think, us. I really think that we get caught up on state laws are saying this. We're trying to propose federal law. Well, if the state says you can't pay cash, but the federal law, we're able to lobby it and take it out. The state could come along and tighten it up. That's right. And say you can't pay cash. Well, if you're able to lobby the state and, and remove that requirement and you're able to pay cash, fine. But eventually, who are you going to be able to sell it to if you fall out of LPPM guidelines for everyone in the supply uh, space? Yeah. You won't be here today, but it's coming soon. Because, you know, in 2022, too, they, didn't, they didn't even have these requirements. And that was just a couple of years ago. Right. Now we're in 24. And it's there. And they just read it. And they're requiring us, IP by members. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, we are not another organization. If we were a different trade group, it wouldn't apply to that trade group. But because we operate in the precious metal space, there's only a few places for the precious metal to flow up the pyramid. pyramid. Yep. And so we have to follow this. We don't have a choice if we want to remain in compliance and have a business. Right. And it's going to squeeze this out. Mm -hmm. So it's coming, um, you know, I don't know what else to say. I mean, I realize that even the Patriot Act exempts retail organizations from cash requirements. They're exempted. Right. Okay. Why is that? Well, because they're retail. Mm -hmm. They're dealing with the public. They're regulated by their local. Regs. Regs. Yeah. They the have, law. The they, law that's on the books they, today. They, they have their, you know, uh, business license and they might be referred to a police department to be a police regulated business because they're dealing with secondhand merchandise. And there's all these reporting and holding period requirements that are uh, in, involved with that process at the retail level. Okay. And they can pay cash. That's fine. That's exempt. But what's occurring there? Let's think about that for a moment. What's occurring there? The responsible sourcing aspect of this is through the reporting requirements of that retail establishment, all right? So if you buy from the public, you know, you fill out the report, mm -hmm. the description of the secondhand merchandise, and it goes to the department that's overseeing the licensing of that and regulation of that program. So the responsible sourcing aspect of it it's is taken care of at the local level, right? okay? Because if there is stolen merchandise involved and theft has been reported and, just, and, and the article has been described, you see I'm being very general in the description mm -hmm, of what mm -hmm. the merchandise is, right? right? It could be anything. Anything. It could be a wall painting, it could be a catalytic converter, it could be a dinery. You know Tiffany's lamp. Your Tiffany lamp. So, you know, my Tiffany lamp was stolen in a home burglary. I reported it. Well, this, this you know, this secondhand dealer over here purchased it and reported it. And right. then now it's, they're, picked, up on it's picked up on report and then it's, it's handled, you know, locally and, and the enforcement is, is occurring at that level. That's right. right. And that's why they're exempt in the Patriot Act, right? Mm -hmm. Because those things exist. Because those and things they're on exist. the books. Now, if, if you're not operating at that level, right, and you're not following those types of guidelines, right, and you're paying cash, you're going to fall outside of those LPPM guidelines. Definitely. So how would you pass compliance as a retail business when you're submitting your application to your upstream who you're selling to? They're going to review it. Mm -hmm. They're going to ask for your licensing, mm -hmm. your business procedures, Right. And they're going to make the determination whether you're compliant or not. Right. That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. And that's where this is all going. Yep. And if it's not occurring, it will soon be occurring uh, if you're going to uh, participate in this space. It's good. It's Absolutely. good for all of us. That's right. Tightens it all up. We like it. Um, it's going to be hard for some because some people, you know, they've been doing business for 20 years the same way. And, but change is coming. And right. it's just the way it is, you know. Right. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I thought that was a lot of great detailed information, you know. So... Be proactive versus reactive. If you are in this sector and you're <laughs> you're not up to speed on what we just discussed, because it will affect you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you know, it isn't my, it isn't my preference. It's just the reality of of operating today in this space. Yeah, right. right. I mean, we, we can no longer say that you know catalytic converter is scrap metal. Right. No, it's precious metal entering the precious metal recycling uh, supply stream. That's right. And so all of the rules and regulations apply apply in that space. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, ferrous or non-ferrous scrap. There's other uh, rules and regulations that apply for that space. That's right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate it. I had to get that off my chest because I read this stuff and I, and I thought, somebody else out there needs to know about this because uh, if it doesn't come from the IPMI, the LPPM is not going to go down the supply right. stream. Right. They're not going to share it out to the supply stream other than us IPMI members. And I think it's, I think it's uh, uh, our responsibility as IPMI members to share the information That's right. out there. Because we deal with people that are outside of our organization every day. Mm -hmm. 